Hi everyone, good afternoon to all of those looking in the phones, to all of those busy about what we are going to go and tell our school management about which stalls we visited and what we did. A very good afternoon. I'm Meenal Desai and uh, I've been given the privilege of coming and talking to you. So thank you so much for being here. My topic is basically very simple. It says reschool or be a relic. Honestly, all of us are associated with schools and education in one form or another, right? Show of hands, all of us associated with schools in some form or another? True. However, uh, if we look at schools the way we have been schooled, we are very soon going to be a relic. A relic matlab, you know, when something just becomes a thing of the past, something that is fossilized, something that... Uh, that you look at as, as a testament of what the past was. So, I'm going to talk to you about three different stakeholders and how we need to relook at our schools because if we don't, we are going to be a relic very soon. These hundreds of tech players that exist around here, so many people trying to sell us something or the other, a lot of it is going to be obsolete and redundant. Believe me, these smart classes, smart TVs that we are trying to buy, these fancy equipment that we are trying to get for our students' learning may not be the best investment. Because AI, ChatGPT, and hundreds of other things that are coming our way are far, far, far smarter than any hardware that we are probably able to see. So, what is it that we as a school can do? The first stakeholder for this that I would want to touch upon is, of course, the student. And do you know how we need to reschool ourselves for our students? Any idea, any guesses how we could do that? Think about it. If we had to reschool ourselves, keeping the student in mind, what is one thing that we need to change? Sorry? Upskill? Yes, upskill ourselves definitely but in one specific area that we believe is of extreme importance, and that is listening as the adult. As a school, we've been told all our lives that we need to teach our children how to talk. And in doing so, we become the adult, like I am right now, talking to you. We go to the class and we start talking, talking, talking. But we need to stop in our tracks and we need to start listening to them. And we need to train them to listen. We need to train them to be active listeners. And how do we listen? You think you go to a class and you tell them, okay, okay talk to me better, the, better the, the child will start talking to you, that student is interested in talking to you? No. That child is talking on a chat platform. That child is communicating through reels. That child is communicating through YouTube shorts. And that is where we need to be. We are on two different universes. Our children are on shorts and reels and we are with the chalk. It's just out of sheer power that we are holding them in the classroom. We are the dictator of the class who decides how much attendance you've got to bring in. You take that power away and very few people would be interested in being in the classroom. So we need to start listening to them through their channels and not through our channels. We are so used to the chalk and talk method. We are so used to the dialogue, the oratory dialogue that we keep talking like that. Doesn't work that way. So, stakeholder number one and the way we need to reschool ourselves is anybody here who's listening, can you reiterate that for me? Listening. Thank you so much for listening to me. <laughs> All right. Who could be the next stakeholder? Stakeholder number two could be one student. Who else is a stakeholder in the school? Teachers. Extremely important. Right? And what is that one way in which we could reschool ourselves for our teachers? Think about it. Many of you are teachers. Show of hands. Who are many are teachers in the classrooms? I am. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So what could we do differently? What is one thing that we could do differently if we were to reimagine or reschool ourselves for teachers specifically? Lot of things, I'm sure. But one thing we've identified in our school and as a school leader is to give feedback in time. Seemingly very simple thing. 
but please understand a lot of teachers join us without formal training and even if they have formal training sometimes it is just outdated for today's classroom and somehow we expect those teachers to perform according to the whims and fancy of the school leader and that teacher gets no feedback no feedback in time that feedback is given at the end of the year at the time of appraisal and that teacher is told are aapka ye lesson plan baki tha aapne ye nahi kiya wo nahi kiya ye nahi tha this was not in place you should have thought of experiential learning but when we give that feedback at the end of the year it is way too late the year has already gone by so we need to start looking at our teachers just the way we look at our children and we need to start sharing feedback for it but once again you think if you go to a teacher and you stop her in her tracks and tell her this lesson plan that i observed of yours it did not have blah 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 and you need to start working on this you think the teacher would be open to that feedback in most cases no unless you created a context for it that feedback is not going to be acted upon so you need to give feedback in time but you need to do it one on one you need to sit with that teacher one on one and speak to the teacher and tell her i observed abc in your classroom which worked extremely well i know you are struggling with xyz but here are three things that could help you do better as a teacher this single 15 minute conversation that you as a school leader or you as a class teacher can have with your child or as a school leader have with your teacher could change the very fabric of your school it could change how you look at each other that is how we'll have to reschool ourselves because unless we do that all this technology combined in this huge hall is going to be redundant it's going to be lakhs of rupees wasted and locked up in a room which nobody is going to use because why why because the teacher fears the teacher fears using something saying what if i am reprimanded for it you need to create that bond where that teacher gets that feedback regularly and the teacher knows that if i try something that's okay so that is stakeholder number 2 for us one is student the other is teacher who is the third stakeholder any guesses school management definitely anybody else parents thank you <laughs> definitely the parents think about it we all almost all of us belong to private schools right which means our salaries our existence or our visit to didac itself is in one way or the other being financed by the parents through the fees that they pay for it they are the most they are a very important stakeholder in our school whom we have deliberately kept at bay we've told them give us your child and don't come back come back only when we call you come back only when there's a ptm and in the ptm we'll tell you what is not working in your child what is not right and then we become these gnan gurus who will tell how you need to be the parent and do you think that works do you think that helps the parent be a champion of your school how many of your parents here raise your hands bus okay you know how difficult it is to be a parent right being a parent in the changing society we we probably been brought up in a society where joint families were the norm where having multiple people around a growing up child was just taken for granted where child having a lunch in your house and having dinner in your friend's house in the colony and coming back at 9 in the night and then just sleeping at his friend's out without telling you anything was absolutely normal and what have we done we've created paranoia around that child going anywhere without informing you the child and the parent has developed this largest umbilical cord called the mobile phone anywhere that the child goes the parent needs to know there is literal fear about what if my child is out of my sight and living under that threat has created so much pressure for that parent that when we as schools 
end up giving those live volcano projects to be submitted tomorrow or in two days. Do you think the child ever does that project? Most of it is parents' work that comes to you. Why would you want to do that? Why would we as a school want to give out projects? Why would we as a school want to give out unrealistic ideas of what a child should create, which then ends up having the adult make those things? So, number three in which we, a form in which we need to reschool ourselves is to start looking at parents as partners and not as just providers of your fee or caretakers of the, your students. We need to genuinely empathize with them. We need to be able to sit across the table and tell them we understand where you are coming from. That raising a child as a feuding family, there are mothers and fathers who are probably not getting along with each other. There is, there is bawal back home which then percolates to the class, to the student and all of that. We probably just need to sit with them and tell them that as a school we understand it's not easy to parent a child in the 21st century. And once we do that, that is when the relationship begins. And the first thing that we need to start doing after that is have parenting classes. Believe me, we don't need to teach our children as much as we need to work with our parents on what is it to parent a child. Sometimes they have such unrealistic notions that they need to be set right. And no outsider can do it. It is only the school teachers and schools that can do it. And hence, the third and the final way in which we need to reschool ourselves before we become a relic is to partner with the parent, is to become the parent's true champion, true confidant. The parent, even today, trusts the school to do right. The parent probably doesn't know that the future for which that parent is sending your, the child to the school is already changing. When you go to a doctor, you expect the doctor to have better understanding of the physiology of your body than you do. Similarly, that parent has entrusted the child to us. Now it is our job to make sure that we do it right by the parent. Even if it at times means breaking their own notions of what is it to be a parent. So, with that, I conclude my talk, small little one, of saying how do we need to reschool ourselves unless we want to be a relic. This is me, Meenal Desai, from James Genesis International School. And uh, thank you, Didac, so much for calling me over here. And I hope I've been able to, to give you some idea of how we need to relook at the future. Thank you.